All right, what I'm doing right here, uh, I normally have this light on, the LED light shining across when I'm sanding, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it off for a minute, and because uh, I can pretty much see what I'm doing, and then I'll check it uh, after I'm done sanding to make sure I didn't miss anything. But um, as I mentioned before, we're using this quarter cable, um, quarter pad sand, all right? It, it kind of like oscillates around. And um, I like it better than a disc because we can get into square corners like this, all right? Where the disc does not get in there. This is, like I said, we're using 240 grit paper. This is wet or dry. And um, I've got this little gadget. It's got these little nibs on here. You, you punch it down and it puts holes in it for, to aid in dust collection, all right? So you're going to see me now. This has been primed already, okay? So it's ready to get sanded before we go into the spray room and put the final coat to Okay, that's it for the pad sander. Now we use these uh, little manual pads. And this way I get right to the very inside corner because this panel is recessed down a little bit. So it takes a lot of tedious, time-consuming handwork to do this properly. But this is a step you cannot eliminate. They don't have a machine that actually does this. Those brushes, they don't really do a good job. The, the, um, the, uh, the Formax machines with the brush where you feed it through like a white belt sander and the brushes uh, deburn this or whatever you call it. I don't really care for them. Um, you see how I'm doing all the edges by hand. I don't like to use the machine and I'm, I'm going across the break over edges that I, I talked about earlier when we were sanding the bare wood. These foam pads are great for this. Yeah, I don't like to use this on the edges because it'll take too much. The pad is soft enough, it, it kind of like wraps around that flat edge. And what it'll do, it'll take all the paint off the outside corners. We want to avoid as much of that as possible. You gotta get all the edges, the inside edges, the inside corners. Because when we apply this primer, it raises the grain, especially on the edges and these inside edges. Not so much on the flat, but all the edges. Uh, it kind of raises the grain quite a bit, so if you don't hand sand these, they're gonna be awfully rough. And then when, uh, I mean it'll look okay, but when it's in a house for a while, dust is going to grab and stick in that because it's going to be such a rough finish on those edges. And it just looks more like a piano finish when you do it like this. Right, Walt? Yeah. Walt's standing next to me here. He know I'm, normally we work in tandem. I'm doing this and he's doing the edges. But, um, just in the interest of getting a decent video together right now. And he's kind of private. He doesn't like, he wants me to pay him $500 an hour if he's going to be on video, you know? He, he said that's what actors get in Hollywood, so. <laughs> nah, he's a good guy. All right, so now we've gone over it with the pad. And by the way, you notice, you want to keep blowing this off because that uh, powder builds up and, um, clogs up the grit on here, so you keep blowing them off. Now I'm going to come with a scotch, but by the way, you should be wearing a mask when you do this. For the sake of being able to have good clarity in my voice talking during a video, I'm not wearing a mask, but normally you do wear a mask, right? Well, Alright, now I'm going to come with the scotch pad, and I'm going to hit all all the inside corners, the outside edges. And 
now I'm going to hit the flat, and I, I was, if you notice, I've kind of balled it around the edges, and now I'm going to hit the flat parts. Now what this scotch pad is doing, if you just use this, sometimes the powder builds up a little bit, you might put a little bit of a glaze on there. The scotch pad puts back just a little bit of a scratch pattern, not a lot, not enough to ever show up if you put a light across, but just enough so that the, um, the lacquer is going to get a good mechanical bond, not just a chemical bond with the primer. I'm talking about the finish coat. It will, um, it gets a good chemical bond with the primer, but I also want to make sure that I have a, a rough enough scratch pattern here that I also get a physical bond. And that's what they do, like Brillo pads. 3M makes these. Um, they come in different colors. Each color is a different grit. This is, I think they call this like a super fine maybe or something like that, the burgundy color. There's a gray, there's a green, they come in different colors. And we found this one works out great. It's kind of equivalent, I think, to a 220 or 240 grit sandpaper. But unlike the paper, which clogs up a little bit with the powder, which could start to do a kind of a um, burnishing effect, Scotch pad doesn't do you would understand if you ever used a Brillo pad for cleaning. It's got enough texture. Alright, so we've done that. Now again, we keep, clean, keep blowing these off. Now I'm going to blow the bulk of this off. And especially the inside corner. Make sure there's no powder buildup. Okay, now the last step before they go into the spray room, these t-shirts I was talking about, they've been delinted. There's no lint whatsoever on these because they've been washed four million times. <laughs> and how do I know that? These are t-shirts from my house. I had over 200 of these gray ones, and we've been using them for years. My wife keeps throwing them in the washing machine and folds them up, puts them in my dresser, and I take them out, bring them here, and Walt cuts them up with scissors and makes nice rags. But it's really good for picking up the, um, the powder off the door. And it doesn't leave any static charge that will attract dust. And as I explained, I don't like tack rags at all. You have to keep blowing them off. I'm putting a moderate amount of pressure when I when I um, wipe this off. I'm not just going, and you see I'm constantly, you know when you wax and you're wiping wax off and you constantly turn the rag to keep picking up the wax? You're basically doing the same thing with these rags. Okay, this is ready to go in the spray room. One last shot with the air hose. So this is going to go in, it'll set on those nail boards that you see what I'm spraying. And, um, and then right before I spray, we set them down face up. Um, and then I go through and make sure they're blown off and I give them one final light wiping and blow off. Then I turn them over and then do the same thing on the back and then we start spraying. Well, you can take that away and I will start. You can have the rag, you can have your scotch pad and I will go back to the power machine. Alright, so we got a drawer face here. Oh no, this is a door. Yeah, this is a door. 
because it was, it's too bright my eyes to look at the camera but I'm normally standing with this light on but I want to just double check this one to make sure there was nothing I, that I maybe missed see the lights light shining above won't show defects so if you've got to look at it with a light shining across and these LEDs are perfect for that this looks good okay well let me take that so um, yeah, I'm going to shut it off again because I'll do one more door while you... Now, when I'm doing these larger areas, notice I'm, I'm going this direction first and then I'm going back across in the, the opposite direction. <laughs> take a lot of sanding to get these smooth and that's because of all the work we did before we sprayed we prepped these pretty good if you watched me in the video earlier in the video where we were sanding all this by hand earlier and then that Kremlin lays down such a beautiful coat very little overspray so I'm not getting a lot of um, it's all you can almost spray it right out of the all over the primer it's that smooth when you lay it on all right, I'm going to let Walt Scott pad this one and take it over from there. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much the process here. You know? Now, these drawer fronts are a little too small. I can't get in there. So I'm going to have to do these panels by hand. <laughs> Yeah, these scotch pads, these, I mean these um, foam pads, best thing since sliced bread ever. I used to take the pieces that we took off the pad sander and I would fold them and that's what I would use around. I found these, once I used one of these, I got these at a show, year old, 30 years ago I saw these at a show, a trade show. I bought a box of them. And I've never looked back. I never went back to hand They're especially great if you've got moldings with profiles. And, uh, they'll conform to any shape, you know what I mean? So they're, they're really good for it. Now you see, I'm, I'm turning my... When I come to this corner, I'm using my left hand because I want my finger right over the area that I'm sanding on the back of the pad. When I come down here, my pinky's there and I don't have that good of a feel. So that's why I turn around now, I'll go the other corner. You want your finger to be right down, when you do these inside corners, you want your finger right down where you're pressing into the edges of the styles and the rails. You notice I'm working off on cardboard here as well, all right? That keeps it so we can move it around, we don't get any scratches or anything from the workbench itself. background noise. We got a couple fans in the spray room going. Uh, I shut the exhaust fan off in the spray booth, but I keep um, a couple big floor fans going. That helps um, dry the material. It's just, as this lacquer is drying, it's off gassing. So that helps a lot to keep the air moving and it speeds up that off gassing effect. We want to get that stuff out of the spray room as soon as possible to bring in the next load. And you also hear the compressor going. There, it just stopped. 
So um, if you wonder what all the background noise is, if you can't hear me too well, that's just um, part of the environment we work in. There's always some kind of noise going somewhere, mostly from these passing lips here. Of course, um, Walt here, he likes to play around the air hose, so he's making a lot of noise over there. Now, you don't ever see the center panel, the back of the panel on a drawer face because the drawer box covers it. But you notice I'm still sanding it. And um, that's because I, regardless of whether you see it or not, I still want to know that there's a good finish underneath there. Um, it's kind of like the guys that built guitars. An acoustical, an acoustical guitar, they've got these beautiful, uh, unbelievable finish on the outside of the guitar. But if you ever took a mirror and looked inside the sound hole to see what it looks like inside there, the guys that are really good, the custom guitar makers, they make sure, I mean, they're not lacquered or anything, that's all raw wood inside. The, back, the, the faces of them are normally a, something like spruce or something. And then the backs and the sides are mahogany or maple or something. And they don't put a finish on it, stays raw wood. Uh, and you don't want to finish because you want it, number one, to breathe, and you want it to be able to move, vibrate, transmitting the, the tone and the sound of the wood. Uh, they do a lot of gluing. They glue ribs underneath the face of the guitar to give it, a, to give it rigidity, all right? Which you don't want too much. You want it to be able to vibrate and to give good tones. But I've noticed, if you ever went and looked on YouTube videos of these guys that build these guitars, the guys that are the real craftsmen, they make the inside, when they put the glue on, they glue those strips underneath, the reinforcing strips, they wipe the glue off, and they sand the pieces first, they make it look as good on the inside as the outside, albeit no finish on it. And that's taking pride in your workmanship, and I like to see that. And that's why, now this is no guitar, but um, the back of the drawer, even though you'll never see it, I've, I've sanded that just every much as good as I do on the face. So if you ever go on one of my jobs and you take the drawer face off the box, you'll see the back of the drawer face is finished off very nicely. And, um, and that's only some. A lot of my, a lot of my, this is our kitchens and baths. My furniture, for the most part, the drawer face is an integral part of the drawer. I don't build a box and then screw a front one when I do furniture, custom furniture. I still do it old school, where the front of the drawer is the front of the box. Whether I've got box joints on there, or if I just routed a dovetail, a sliding dovetail slot, um, or regular dovetails to fasten the front to the drawer face or whatever. But we're getting off topic here because this is all about um, how we prep and finish our materials, our jobs, our projects. And that's about it, right? Well, we've got them all ready to go. All right, so I'm going to be heading into the spray room now. And um, you'll see a little bit of video of that. I'm going to get some of the dust off. Probably got about five pounds of um, lacquer dust, and I'm probably gonna die before I reach 40. Yeah, right. Been there, done that, right? Okay. We'll see you in the spray room in a little bit. Bye, all. Okay, I'm gonna jump in here for a minute. Um, what I want to do is I want to add uh, a couple more parts to this um, video. I started out thinking I could do it in four parts, and I was trying to keep the time down to around 15, 20 minutes. And um, I kind of went way over that, so I really didn't get to show everything I wanted to do. So um, this is part four of four, but if you watch in a little while, I'm going to upload two more parts. There'll be a part five and six, all right? So, um, yeah, I'm editing this right now, and this is um, several weeks after I had actually done those videos. And you can see I'm not missing teeth down here anymore. I'm still missing teeth up here. Uh, they have done some work on here, so at any rate <laughs> um, 
Yeah, um, so this is, I, st I got my time machine, I jumped ahead a month or so, and um, just to put this a little bit of editing into the original video, and then we're going to go back in the time machine to the video again, because I want to add, um, this video is ending with me still standing and um, wiping down the doors, getting ready to spray. So um, I didn't have time to in, in the first four parts to show me applying the final coat. So um, there'll be at least one. Maybe I could do it in one more part. There might be five and six or maybe just part five. So, um, yeah, um, after this video, I go back onto my um, channel and you'll see there's at least one more part, part five, possibly six parts. All right. I can only show one in five and one is six. All right. I'm holding my cell phone. Um, I, I'm not in front of the, um, the camera on a tripod right now. I'm holding my cell phone to uh, video this part right here. And, um, okay, so at any rate, look for more. Part 5, maybe part 6. Thanks, folks. See you in a bit.